to immediately rush to the Google Gods and ask what are the worst foods and what are the best foods that I should be eating right now. Too much sugar, like drinking too many of those sodas, will for sure lead to you getting diabetes. Or you starting to lift weights is going to make you for sure become a bodybuilder. Next one we've got is hot dogs. And hot dogs, I don't really disagree. It's kind of like and then it says switch to 2% or 1% or skim milk as a better option. Here's the thing, when it comes to and I wanna go through and give you my honest thoughts as I go through this list. What is going on? Welcome to this breakdown of an article I found that talks about the 10 worst foods to consume if you're living with diabetes. Diabetes. And why I even wanna break this down as a registered dietitian, strength coach, and someone who's lived with diabetes myself for over 20 years is because a lot of people, when they're first diagnosed with diabetes or they're told, hey, you might have pre-diabetes, Diabetes, or they just want to know, you know, what kind of foods are good and what kinds of foods aren't good, and they don't even want to consider getting diabetes in the future. I'm out of here. Are going to immediately rush to the Google Gods and ask, what are the worst foods and what are the best foods that I should be eating right now? And a lot of times people will take these articles as the gospel and follow them super closely, which can be detrimental if the article is not informing the person of the right information. So this one is from the Cleveland Clinic, which is one of the premier clinics in the country. So you would imagine it's gonna have a ton of great information and I wanna go through and give you my honest thoughts as I go through this list. Oh my God, I can't freaking wait. So without further ado, let's get at it. And now it begins. So out of the gate, they said food is medicine, 100% in agreement with that. And they mentioned how certain foods that are high in fat, high in sodium, high in refined carbs, all of those can contribute to long-term detrimental impacts on your health. For example, high blood pressure, uncontrolled blood sugars, and weight gain. I am in total agreement with this. If those things are consumed in large amounts, and if those things are going to ultimately result in a calorie surplus and lack of activity activity as well. If there's lack of activity alongside of that, there could be some issues. No! But let's get into the actual list. So the first one is sweetened drinks. So that would be regular soda, sweet tea, fruit juices, high C, any of those artificially added sugar types of beverages. And I don't disagree with this one at all. As a person with diabetes, the only time you're really thinking about somebody consuming something like that is if they're having a low blood sugar episode. And it's one of the fastest acting sources of glucose and it will get absorbed super quickly and make your blood sugar go back to normal. So that one, I don't know if I would say it's one of the worst foods, but it's definitely not something that I would be saying, hey, go out of your way to make sure you have this particular thing. We'll go one for one so far. So number two, we've got the designer and specialty coffee drinks. So this is gonna be, you know, your Frappuccino, your big fancy drink you get during the holidays at Starbucks. And those, I will agree, have a ton of calories, usually a ton of added sugar. Sugar, sugar, sugar. And the saturated fat that they're referencing is in the form of whipped cream, which tastes amazing. Yum. I don't know about you, but I personally love me some whipped cream. And here's the thing with those. It's very similar to the first one, the sweetened beverages, the sweetened drinks. It's, again, not something you're gonna gravitate to every now and then, probably something you could feasibly have. I wouldn't have it every single day because the nutritional value that it's providing is basically zero. Zero, how many? Zero, what? Zero. So we can give a two for two. What I don't like is their incriminating saturated fat. Because saturated fat is a complete completely misunderstood nutrient. You don't know me! That I'm not advocating saying eat sticks of butter, but I'm also not saying avoid it like the plague. So if you want a video on saturated fat, definitely comment down below. But I'll give them credit on that one. There's really not a whole lot of nutritional value from the specialty drinks. So we will go two for two so far. All right, this one, whole milk is phenomenal. The reason why to not have whole milk is because it has too much fat, which will lead to weight gain. That type of thinking is akin to too much sugar, like drinking too many of those sodas will for sure lead to you getting diabetes. Or you starting to lift weights is going to make you for sure become a bodybuilder. 
that is completely misguided. And then it says switch to 2% or 1% or skim milk as a better option. Here's the thing, when it comes to milk, 2% milk and whole milk are about three or four grams difference in fat per serving. So why are they advocating for just less fat? It's like 40 or 50 extra calories. It's not that massive of a difference in terms of weight gain. If you're drinking an entire gallon of whole milk per day, sure, that's a substantial amount of calories, but a tiny little bit between 2% and whole milk is not enough to say you're gonna automatically gain weight. It's absolutely beyond me as to how you could make that type of assumption on something so small. Exactly. And then to tack on to that, it's been shown in research that people who consume sources of fat that are dairy-based actually tend to have better body compositions than people who are not consuming that. It's been shown in multiple different studies. So with that, oh. Ooh, ooh. That's a huge overgeneralization, an overgeneralization off the most minute, tiny little thing that you could possibly imagine. So definitely two for three. It starts going on this rant about carbs and making sure you get something like rice milk or almond milk instead. Rice milk is literally the same thing as those sweetened beverages that they were just talking about in the first two. So I'm not really sure how that is a better substitute. At that point, drink the fruit juice. You're at least going to get the vitamin C, right? Correct! Ooh. 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 Two for three. All right, so next one we've got is hot dogs. And hot dogs, I don't really disagree. It's kind of like the first two on the list. There's nothing really nutritionally helpful about hot dogs. They're super low in protein. They do have a decent amount of saturated fat. They are high in sodium. So the points they bring up are valid. And quite frankly, they come from, I don't wanna say they come from a sketchy source, but you know, you don't really wanna know what's in a hot dog. Me too. So I don't see a reason to necessarily put it on this list, but I could understand, okay, you know, it's a hot dog, letting it slide. So we'll go three for four. Next. Now, the next part is lunch meat. And the rationale behind not having lunch meat is high in sodium, which I agree with, but high in saturated fat. Huh? I don't know about you, but the next time you go to the grocery store, go take a look at a package of turkey or a package of chicken breast or something like that, you know, that comes from the lunch meat section. Sure, bologna and salami may have a good amount of fat, but if we're talking about turkey or we're talking about chicken breast, there's hardly any fat, let alone saturated fat in there. So unless you plan on eating the entire container at one time and getting just loaded up with sodium, there should not be a concern about saturated fat when it comes to that. If you're gonna say lunch meat, say bologna, or say something that's actually got a good amount of fat in it instead of lumping them all into the same thing. Because a lot of people and a lot of dietitians I know would recommend to somebody living with diabetes or someone who's on the verge of getting diabetes to consume chicken breast or consume roast beef or turkey breast because it's a lower carb, higher protein option. So that one, definitely not. Definitely not. And definitely not in the top 10. Whew, whew, whew. So next one we've got our...